Hey, good morning, troops. How are we doing this morning? Well, I am uh, enjoying some very nice weather in here in Disney World. Well, actually, I'm still here at school. So what we're going to do for you this morning is a little crisscross applesauce. Now, before we get into uh, your paper that you guys have passed out in front of you called the crisscross method, so everybody should be having this sheet. We're going to go over a few things just to kind of highlight what this is. So why do we have a formula of NaCl? How do we get that? So what we are going to do is explain uh, from your periodic table that Na is a plus one charge. Cl is a minus one charge. Now in order for something to come together, they have to be able to balance their charges out. So how can something so dangerous remember we did sodium and water that's right <laughs> in the fume hood how can something so dangerous with sodium and chlorine being such a dangerous gas how can two things come together and then balance each other out well that's called electrostatic stability okay and what that's going to be is a balancing of charges so we are going to use something called the crisscross method. So all you're going to do, if this is a plus one charge, that is a minus one charge. All you're going to do is bring that charge down here, one, this charge down here, one. And that is why we write sodium chloride as NaCl. Okay. Now let's also do another recognizable one as water. Okay, now why do we put H2O? Well, let's go back. Uh, look at your periodic tables. Okay, get your purple periodic tables out if you would. I'll give you a couple seconds to do that. Okay, now look. Look where H is. H is in group one, which means it has a plus one charge. Okay, oxygen is a minus two charge. Okay, which means it's in group 6A. Okay, so if we're going to do the crisscross method again, remember we're trying to balance charges. So how many hydrogens do we need to balance out those uh, negative two ions for the oxygen? Yep, that's right. Two comes down here. The one comes down here. So that is why we write that formula as H2O. Okay, or you could look at it this way. How many H ions am I going to need to balance out the negative two ions? Because remember, we want our zero net charge to be zero. Okay? So if I put another hydrogen like that, how many H's do I have? That's right. We have two pluses, two minuses, and the difference between that is going to be zero. Okay, so that's why all of these formulas can come together uh, within an electrostatic attraction and have a zero net charge. Okay, so that is what we're going to be doing today uh, with our crisscross method. All we are trying to do is balance the charges. So in this case, we have two hydrogens, one oxygen, H2O. Up here in the previous example, 1 Na, 1 Cl, NaCl. Okay, now, if you guys would, uh, please get out your sheet, your crisscross sheet, okay? And on the back of your crisscross sheet, you're going to have a list of polyatomic ions. Okay, now, in a uh, crayon, highlighter, Okay, I want you to highlight or mark down all of these polyatomic ions. Now, if you look at the word poly, poly want a cracker? <laughs> poly means many, atomic means atom, and ions means that they're a charged particle. So many atoms that are charged. Many atoms that are charged. 
Okay, so you can clearly see one, two, three different types of atoms being used. Okay, so these are the ones that you're going to be responsible for. I need you guys to start putting them on uh, note cards to not only know their formula, their charge, and the name. The sooner you do this, the better off you're going to be uh, because this is chemistry, folks. You have to know the formulas. If you don't know formulas and you don't know their charges, um, well, things are about to get real, real quick. Okay, so make sure you guys are putting them on note cards. Make sure you guys are studying their charges. These are going to be the life of your chemistry. Okay, acetate. I need you guys to know acetate. I need you guys to know ammonium. I need you guys to know nitrite. Nitrate. I need you guys to know hydroxide, phosphate, sulfide, sulfate. Okay? Chloride, chlorate, carbonate. Okay? And this we will deal with later, hydronium, uh, when we deal with acids. But those are the big ones I need you to know uh, at this point. Uh, as soon as you guys begin to know the formula, the charge, and the name, uh, you guys would be really good. So start putting these on note cards. Start studying them as soon as possible. Okay? Your life will become much easier. All right, now uh, let's look at something called the crisscross applesauce method. Okay? Now, this is going to be kind of easy. The first thing I need you guys to do on... Polyatomic ions. So here's your hydroxide, sulfate, phosphate, nitrate. We just learned about those on the other side. Um, the first thing I would like you guys to do is put parentheses around all of your polyatomic ions. Now, what this is going to do for you guys right now is to separate kind of the what is the formula, what is the charge. Okay, so this will help you out. You can do the same thing on the other side. Now, this is cobalt plus three, not carbon monoxide with a plus three charge. Okay, so here we go. Na plus Cl minus, just like we did in our example. Crisscross it. NaCl. Okay, I'm going to work these on this paper, and then you guys can see what I'm doing here a little bit better. Okay. Now, when you cross Na and S, Na has a plus charge. S has a minus 2 charge. Okay? So, when you crisscross it, the 1 comes down here. Now, we don't write 1s. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to include just the, just the element. So, by you writing the element down, says 1. Okay? The 2 will come down here. So, in this box, Na2S. All right. Now, let's go across NaNOH. This is the first time that we have seen polyatomic ion. At this point, keep it in parentheses. Your time later will, will be okay, but I need you to know right now that just keep them in parentheses. Your, this will make your life much easier. So, again, if you look at a plus and a minus, that balances each other out, okay? Gives you a zero net charge. So, um, this one's an easy one. One down here, one down there. So, you're going to write in the square NaOH, just like that, okay? 
Now, this will be the first time that we've seen a polyatomic ion that is not a one charge. So when you look, Na plus SO4 minus 2. So how many Na pluses at a one charge is it going to take to balance out two negatives? Yeah, it's going to take two of them. So crisscross that. The two comes down there. The one comes down there. We don't necessarily need to write the ones. So we are going to write Na, SO4, two times. Now, you cannot deal anything with that four. That is part of the formula, which means you have to keep that formula, just like it is. That's why we do parentheses. So when you have multiples of that uh, of that sulfate, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. I put my two in the wrong spot. Whoop. There we go. That's much more gooder. Did anyone catch that? CQK, you get it? I knew you did. So Na2SO4 three times, or uh, just SO4. Okay, now let's do one uh, where we have what we call a transition element. This is going to be in the D block metals, and they have multiple charges. Okay, so. Let's do an Fe and an SO4, okay? Fe plus 3, SO4 minus 2. So what do you think a common factor between a 3 and a 2 is going to be? Yep, that's right, 6. But we don't have to do anything. We don't have to think about 6 because we do the crisscross method. So 3 comes down there. Boom. Boom. The 2 comes down here. Boom. So we are going to write in this square Fe2SO4 three times. Okay? The crystal cross method. So if you want to do this on an extra sheet, you may. But I need you guys to go through and fill in all of these boxes for the appropriate uh, crisscross, okay? Remember, keep all of these separated by parentheses. Make sure your subscripts go outside, okay? Now, one more thing to show you um, before I get out of here for today and give you guys an opportunity to work on your work quietly is let's do aluminum and phosphate aluminum and phosphate okay so al has a plus three charge phosphate has a negative three charge now you could probably already see this happening plus three minus three cancels each other out so three three when you guys write this, it's Al3PO4 three times. Well, you're probably thinking to yourself by now is, well, if a plus one minus one canceled each other out, why can't a three and a three cancel each other out? It can. So what I need you guys to do is to write this in a most reduced form. That's what we call an empirical formula, is AlPO4. Same thing. So... The threes reduced down to now ones. So when you put that in your uh, little box here, you're going to write ALPO4. Okay. Now, one more thing that I can show you is uh, MGS. Same thing. Plus two, minus two. All right, so I'm about to run out of time on my 15-minute limit uh, on this video, so hope you enjoy things. I am enjoying myself uh, here in Disney World, and we will come to you live again tomorrow morning. Guys, hope you have a great day. Go forth and prosper. Be good.